And now, America's favorite hunting couple, Ralph and Vicki Cianciarulo. Welcome to the Archer's Choice. This week, we're talking about the rut. Now, most of you are saying, oh, the rut again for white-tailed deer. You know, grunting, rattling, snort wheezing, using scent, and but yeah. we're not. Yeah, or, or you're thinking about the elk out west, you know, bugling, getting all hot, getting their cows, or maybe moose hunting up north. You don't really think too much about caribou during the rut. At least no, we never have. We never did until Peter Palmer started saying, listen, I want you guys to come up here with Mirage, yep. you know, and, and Russ and, and George from Bullseye were saying, guys, you gotta, you've got to experience this and experience it. All of the caribou hunting that, that we've been fortunate to do, I think we're wrecked. I, I agree. It's, it's middle of October. It's not that early September, late August. They're not in velvet anymore, and these bulls are running around grunting and snorting and chasing the cows like you can't imagine. I mean, now, it was awesome. weather could be bad. I mean, there could be days that you're actually, you can't get out of camp. But, but we got really we lucky. Were <laughs> we lucky. got really lucky. Oh, and we boy. were also fortunate to share camp with David Blanton and Johnny Tate from Realtree. Yep. And, and I we mean, had it was just. a great time with them. And the whole hunt, everything was just exceptional. And we can't wait to share it with you. The only thing I don't like is, I mean, when you talk about, you know, like when we saw a cow, there was like 30 bulls chasing I it. like those odds. I mean, that that's not fair. I mean, it, oh, should, I think so. it should be like, you know, 30 girls chasing one guy. Yeah, in your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> The rut. What's the first thing that comes to mind? A buck trailing a doe, grunting, rattling. The fall autumn colors. A bull elk screaming and challenging anyone who would dare. A massive bull moose tearing apart a bush in the challenge of another wanting his cow. Yes, this is the rut, but not what this show's all about. This week, Vicki and I, with our good friends David Blanton and Johnny Tate from Realtree, headed up to northern Quebec to Mirage Outfitter with owner Luke Aubin and hunting manager Mr. Boo himself, Peter Palmer. In the years we've traveled north to the Canadian tundra in search of caribou, we've been faced with so many different situations, and anyone who's gone caribou hunting knows what we're talking about, that sometimes can frustrate even the most calm hunters. From no caribou, camps not being set up, equipment not working, no fuel, no food, always wet. Oh well, <laughs> the list can go on. But oh boy, wow, did we find a camp that will knock your socks off and make you want to keep returning when you can. Mirage Outfitter is the place. From a main camp in LG4 that is truly a mirage set in the vast tundra landscape with all the amenities and then some. The organization, promptness, well, it's second to none. Then fly out to the hunting camps and you know that this is not the ordinary caribou camp you've heard about. Hunting caribou during the rut is like nothing we've ever seen. Just imagine thousands of caribou traveling across this vast landscape with giant white maned bulls in search of the cow who has what they're looking for. And you being put in the right spot at the right time, well, you've just got to watch these two weeks of the ultimate in caribou hunting. Normally, this late season rut hunt, the weather can play major tricks on you, but someone upstairs was watching out for we had the mildest weather they've seen in years. Well, that's at least until the last day. What are we doing? They're going to load all of our gear on this pallet with this piece of machinery, take it down to the plane. Oh, we don't have to tote it all separate. That's right. That's good. Because toting it's hard. 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 It's actually hard. Ralph's hard. transportation to where we're staying, where we're hunting. Oh, it is? That, hey, Ralph's sit in, in that bucket. little bucket, yeah. I was going to say, Ralph, that's Ralph's Actually, bucket. I think he's going to hunt out of that. <laughs> you know, that could be. He could hunt out of that. It's the first new out, and we're here with Mirage Outfitters. We're hunting caribou in northern Quebec. It's middle October. It's a late rut hunt. There's usually snow on the ground. It's about middle 40s. It's usually supposed to be really cold and really snowy, and we have a beautiful sun shining. We just saw about six caribou bulls running up over. Of course, they saw us before we saw them. A couple good looking ones in that group really white, white manes. Now, now we're getting excited.
Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Well, you know the saying, ladies first. And we'll give them a shot because then it know, we know what we have to beat. We had some caribou come through, but they were smaller bulls, younger bulls, and cows. So we're gonna stay here, set up on a good trail, and see what happens. Second day here at Mirage. They flew us out. We're in a late season rut on. We get flown into where the air herd, our car the caribou are running. They're running hard. We just had some thing with the caribou. You're in a thick cover, but you can hear them coming with their clicking noises. That first bull came up. I know I pulled a white tail thing on my bat to make sure he was going to stop. And I hit I, I got him good. He went. He's probably not 20 yards from my shot. My shot was only 15 feet, if that. Now we gotta find Pierre. 
He was taking Ralph's caribou up top, I think. To let him know he's got more work to do. He's a bit bloody at the moment. He's got great fronts, beautiful fronts, nice shovel. But those tops, look at those tops. That's unique. He's got kicker coming off the back, got some velvet still stuck on him. That is a beautiful bull. He's actually cracking off his points. I don't know if it's from fighting. Beautiful. If he cracks off more, he'll definitely be smaller than mine. I think I might, my fronts might be better than Ralph's, actually. Okay. You don't think so? I don't care. I think they are. It doesn't matter. He's beautiful and old white bull. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm simulating the Canadian crosswinds for you so you're ready for all that. Of course, on my shot, I didn't have that problem, but let's see how Ralph does on his. Don't touch that remote. Archer's Choice will be back in a minute. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Now that Vicky's retrieving my arrows, let's get back to my hunt. He's down. He's... There he is. 
He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. Yes! Thank you. Today's tech tip is string loops. There are three different types of string loops. First is your conventional type of string loop, which puts the release right behind the arrow. Second is similar, but puts a knocking point underneath the arrow to apply pressure down on the arrow rest. Third, for the guys that are used to putting their release on the, on the string underneath the arrow, this gives you the same features of a string loop, but saving your string. This is your tech tip of the day. It's right down here. We still have a lot of caribou coming through, but we want to be as quiet as possible. Go recover that animal. You shot a good bull. <sighs> yep. I think it might have been bigger than mine. What did you say? But we still have two bulls yet. To shoot. We each get to shoot one more bull. So I still have the opportunity of maybe beating you. Are you on a hill? You're taller than me. Let's check out the next segment. <laughs> it has and always will be our goal to bring you with us on truly wild and crazy adventures to share with you the ups downs of real hunting, the good, the bad, and well, maybe even the real ugly. We at Archer's Choice are all about being real, showing the true excitement, sharing, and always remembering that a true trophy is in the eyes of the beholder. We're not quick to judge others, and we ask you to do the same. It is not who shoots what, how big, what's the score. Egos need to be put aside for the growth of this great sport of hunting. It's about all of us strengthening the entire sport. Stop the fighting amongst ourselves. Stand strong as a whole and educate those who don't know where they stand on the sport of hunting. We should not be quick in condemning choices of equipment, techniques, or styles of hunting. Remember, hunting is a very personal thing. But as we make TV shows, videos, write articles about our hunting, we make it public. No one is perfect. If anyone does something you might not believe in your mind is right, before casting a stone or passing judgment, remember, we're all in this together for the next generation of hunters. Hey, that was a good shot. Oh, that's even better. Maybe. I'd say they're both pretty good. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this week's show. And don't forget that next week we have part two of our caribou shows. I think mine's better. Hey, we want to thank you. We want to thank Johnny Tate and David Blanton from Realtree. We want to thank Luke from Mirage with Peter, Peter Palmer. Palmer. And we want to thank George and Russ from Bullseye for helping us set the whole hunt up. Most of all, we want to thank you. Because next week... You get to see who shoots the biggest bull. So maybe go, go to a show or do something else because you don't want to really... Well, I didn't say I did. Oh, I lead a little longer, stronger lead into that one, huh? So remember, we want you to tune back here next week, same time. Same channel. Right here on, on The Archer's, Archer's Choice. Choice.